In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make an awesome cracked lava base in no time at all using stippling and texture paints. Welcome to the Artisopus video. Here is the base again. Let's uh, pull off the salamander. All right, so this is how this turned out. It's a pretty simple scheme. It's really fun. It's fairly unpredictable. Um, I think my use of a hairdryer on this might have made the cracks less obvious, so um, that's something for other people to experiment with. Also, as I mentioned, I think you could use inks uh, rather than the black paint, and perhaps that would mess with kind of the um, characteristics of the aggrelin a little bit less. Basically, you want to be putting on kind of a, a thick layer of it still keeping the key characteristics. And I think putting a latexy paint in there rather than a watery ink probably messes around with the chemistry a little bit more. Um, however, I quite like the kind of like fairly subtle cracks here. It's a bit different as I mentioned also in the video But I'll mention it again Make sure you take your thick paint to the edges of the bases because it really makes a difference when if we look at So this side here doesn't look nearly as good as this side here and the reason for that is Cracks going towards the edge of the base looks really cool um, You want to be kind of chopping them off around the edge You want your cracks to go right to there and then just chop them off with your flat black uh, edges and that really gives a bonus to how it looks. So I hope you like the video, please give it a like, please comment, please subscribe and give us any suggestions for future content below. Any type of basing in particular, like if you want to see me doing like wood bases, desert bases, uh, warm bases, cool bases, uh, industrial bases, anything like that, let us know and I'll be happy to help you out. Okay, so welcome to another AO video. We are going to be doing a super quick rough and ready lava base. Now. Um, a lot of you may well be familiar with my uh, my approach to this type of stuff. It's going to involve some very, very splodgy and extreme stippling. And we're just trying to create a like the, the brightest possible undercoat that we could give. We want to give our base the best start in life. And we are going to achieve that only by making it incredibly shiny. So I'm just getting a quick base coat down all over. Don't worry if the coverage isn't perfect. The only thing you do need to worry about is making sure that your colors go to the very edge. So um, also don't worry if it's not dried yet. Maybe don't cover your thumbs like I did, but it's up to you. Straight to Fire Dragon Bright. We were using Troll Slayer Orange. Now the idea with this is that you just want some pretty extreme bright colors and a fair bit of contrast. So for that reason, I'm gonna jump to Fist on Red. Which is obviously quite a lot darker than anything we've used so far. It's a super potent paint as well. And I'm going to splodge that around in a couple of areas. So you don't have to be subtle with this and the reason is whatever you do we're going to be covering with black cracked earth anyway so we're only going to see a small proportion of this and any kind of subtlety you try to do with blend is going to be completely lost and it may actually detract kind of from the, uh, the final result of what we have going on so we really want to have uh, a lot of stock contrast that are going to be peeking out and are kind of giving you the idea of that cracked base with lava underneath. Straight through to fluorescent orange from Vallejo. This is a, a firm favorite. You'll see why. Look at that color. Everything else on the table just suddenly looked a little bit less potent. So with that here, what I'm going to do is just jump to some brighter colors. Okay, so uh, I've got a white here and the reason that I'm cracking this bad boy out is just to make sure that things are super duper bright. So I'm putting a foundation over which I can lay my fluorescence. Just splodging it around. Like I said, I'm not paying any attention to any particular part of this. I don't have a specific plan in mind. I just want to make sure that I've got a decent amount of variety there. So capitalizing on that being there, I'm going to grab a little bit of the Fire Dragon Bright again mix that in with the fluorescent the fluorescent needs something to bite onto it won't it won't land as well if it isn't with another paint you could actually probably mix a bit of the white in with it splodge that all over and then what i'm going to do as i always uh, go on about in these videos is if you want something to look bright put it next to something dark and if you want something to look dark put it next to something bright so i'm going to grab again the mephisto on red and i'm going to dot that around a little bit even with a small amount of black in it. So I'm gonna use a bit of Abaddon. It's a particularly non-transparent black, uh, sorry, non-opaque black. It's not a, not a very strong one, and that is gonna kind of play into our hands here because mixed with Mephiston, it, it'll overpower it a lot less than an average black would. 
just gonna splodge it around in random areas that aren't our fluorescent ones. And hopefully this thing that looks super messy is gonna end up looking really, really shiny when we put our next stages over it. So next stage is just a quick gloss varnish. Don't use a brush that you love for this. It's not a, uh, a friendly thing to be using a brush for and goes without saying, do give it a good clean afterwards. So the reason for this is that I want our um, our texture paint that I'm gonna be putting on down after this, I want it to really have no resistance and shrink away from um, from the model. So you can mix this with PVA, it's kind of a, a bit of a, a tricky thing to control, but I'm gonna be using it nice and thick, and then hopefully this gloss varnish should help it pull away. Also, I want the lava to look shiny underneath, and this should play with that too. Okay, so I've got my Agrellin Earth here. I like to use an old one that's evaporated, that is a top tip. You want thick stuff, it's easier to put it down thick if it is thick. Um, if you've got the wet stuff, it just you can't quite get the same effect. So I'm gonna be mixing this with black and that should hopefully give us the end result we're going for. I'm actually gonna use a bit of a layer in this one. And now just blob it down properly thick on your model. Um, so obviously this black will affect how the grill and the earth reacts, but uh, just make sure it's mixed in properly and then put it down, like I said, very thick. Make sure you go to the edges, but not over them. Keep loading it on. And you just need some patience while it dries. Of course, we'll be painting the rim black and be able to cover anything that does seep over, but you may as well do your best to keep it on top. Right, so our base is looking pretty good. I think it might have a little bit more drying to go. Um, do allow longer for these to dry. I think the fact that we've mixed in quite a high proportion of paint changes things chemically. Obviously, our paint is kind of latex based, so that's gonna have an effect. Uh, you could use black ink instead uh, to try and get around that. I'm just gonna give it a black base rim as per normal, using below 950, and then it's perfect for popping our model on. Okay, so it's looking pretty nice. Just to distinguish the rim from the actual top of the base, I've got a little bit of satin varnish here, and I'm just gonna mix it with some more black and quickly whisk my way around the edge, and that's because I want the um, kind of the black over the lava to be matte and for it to stand out from the rest of the base. It is important when you're making the top of the base, really try and run your, um, your texture paint up thick towards the edge because this looks far better if you have cracks disappearing off the edge of your base where the rims are. Um, I should have paid more attention to that and that's why I need to distinguish them so kind of carefully because there's no color distinguishing between um, black and black. Therefore, if you've got those jagged uh, orange lines running right up to the edge like you have in this section, for example, it looks far more effective. But there we go. So that base is finished. Extremely appropriate for our salamander spot on. All right, so here is the finished base again. Like I said, super simple, uh, pretty effective. Uh, there's various different things you could do with this. Um, you could put some skulls on it, why not? Skulls look great on anything, especially against a black background. Um, any excuse you can find to put a little bit of something on there, it kind of makes sense in a very extreme environment, so I can't think of much more than skulls. You can't exactly put flowers there. Um, would be really, really good. Um, you could kind of highlight the, or slightly dry brush the black areas up with a, like a, a muted cool grey or something like Eshin, um, like maybe that would work okay. But I think it's it's basically a, a fairly kind of compacted technique. The other thing you could do is use a different type of uh, like texture. Now you could maybe put some sand in or something like that to make it look more rough. Uh, and then you've got more to dry brush in, so that might look quite cool as well. But uh, yeah, super quick, super fun, uh, like really, really, really fast. And then as a final thing to touch on, if you really want all of your cracks to properly pop up, then start from like a, a bright white base and use Fire Dragon Bright and then just like white and fluorescence and yellows and nothing but that. And then any point that pops through will really like properly punch through that black and be uh, very unsubtle, which I think is fine with that type of basing. It's kind of the idea of it really, isn't it? So please give the video a like, please comment, please subscribe. And particularly with those comments, let us know what you'd like to see in uh, future videos or if you think we've, uh, we've like there's something to improve or things we can add or you want more explanations behind painting or anything like that. Uh, we're always taking the feedback on board and really appreciate it. Thank you very much.